In this lecture, I want to show you what the finished project will look like. So what you're looking here is the LED torch project, the first project in this course. Uh, as it looks like after I completed working on this project for the book version. And I'm going to show you how to get from scratch, from a brand new empty project to this. So just wanted to show you uh, the files that make up this project and of course what the schematic and the final layout look like. So with the uh, schematic itself and the layout as you can see it's pretty simple I didn't want to start with a electrically or electronically complicated project I wanted to start with something simple just to give us the opportunity to learn the tool without having to worry about the electronics part of exactly what we're doing no matter where you start in electronics I'm pretty sure that uh, this is a simple circuit that you understand how it works so it's not going to have uh, cause you any issues getting started with a simple project like this. So here we've got a single circuit with a few simple components. We've got an LED, we've got a resistor to protect the LED, a switch and a battery symbol one loop and that's it and then when we finish with the layout what we end up with is a simple PCB like this. There's provision room for a coin battery, a coin cell battery, the LED at the front of the torch and the button where it's easy to access with your thumb. If we look at the 3D version of this then that's what the end result is going to look like. Just a short interruption to let you know that this video is part of my comprehensive KiCad course that will teach you every aspect of creating printed circuit boards with KiCad from scratch. Go to the course page to learn more about it if you want. Find the link to the course page in the description below and treat yourself with a discount coupon for my YouTube viewers. Okay, let's continue with the video. The other thing that I want to show you is what the project will look like on the command line. So let's bring up the uh, directory with its contents plus the main KiCad window to have a look inside. So you can see the main KiCad window shows us the project files at the very top of this hierarchy we've got the dot kicat underscore profile which you can also see here in the file system and it is uh, let's see this file right here there it is so this describes the project has got project level information you can actually right click on it either way you can do that from the kicat main app or you can right click on the file system itself and open it up with a text tool like Atom for example it doesn't show up here so I would probably do it by drag and drop but I'm going to use this method it's just easier since we have kick it open and that's what this file looks like inside you can spend a bit of time to look at it if you are curious but that's not the topic for this lecture so I'll close it just wanted to show you that that file here contains text instructions Below that, we've got the PCB file and the schematic file, and those are right here in the file system, PCB and schematic. And the schematic file uh, is the one that contains the information for the schematic that you see here. And the, as you can probably guess, the PCB file is the one that contains the layout information. Aside from those two main files, there's two other things to show you here. First is the Gerber's zip file which contains the individual files that you see here. So these files are used for manufacturing. Uh, once the layout is complete we can then export the layout information in a series of as they called Gerber files. We convert them into zip and then we send that zip file to the manufacturer to have the PCB manufactured. So I'll show you how to do that in the next section, uh, which is dedicated to the layout design. The last thing that I want to show you is backups. Uh, backups, obviously, are good practice no matter what you're working. As long as you're working on a computer, you need to ensure that you've got viable backups. It means backups that are reliable, that you can restore from in case uh, that you have uh, a, a program crashing on you and corrupting your saved files. Uh, having a backup is a very good idea. 
and Kickout automatically creates backups. You can see the backups for my project right here. I've got lots of backups automatically created. And to know what the configuration for the backups is, you go to the preferences for Kickout at the very top. There's common. And then here there's project backup. I've selected automatic backups and that's enabled. And the default here, I haven't changed this, is five minutes between backups. So I've got five minutes between backups. I've got a maximum of five backups per day. The project will clean up after itself. So it will keep five backups. And um, uh, there's the maximum backups to keep. As you can see here, they come from different days as well. Starting from the 11th, going to the 15th of March, there's five backups per day, but in total up to 25 backups. So you set up your backup parameters yet. The most important one is, in my opinion, this one. You always tend to want to go back to the, uh, the nearest, uh, the latest backup. So five minutes per backup seems to be a good compromise uh, between um, having a recent backup and not wasting too much space on uh, the disk or decreasing performance. Okay, so that's it. Let's go to the next lecture where we'll get started with the project from scratch.